Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. And for those of you who are first timers, welcome. My name is Shalena Janelle. I'm a singer songwriter, a minister of the gospel, and author of The Gates, Access to the Throne of God, and many other books. Um, I pray that uh, you have been blessed by my channel thus far. If this is your very first video of mine, you are gonna be blessed by this topic that we have today. Today's topic is fasting. People have been asking about fasting and asking if it is a necessity for Christians to fast. And I'm going to dig right deep into the topic of this, okay? Father God, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you, Lord, for your grace upon each and every one of our lives, Lord. We thank you that you've blessed us to be able to see another day. We thank you, Lord, that you have given us all the ability to seek you and find you if we seek you with all of our heart, Lord God. God, in the name of Jesus, I just pray, Lord God, that you just open up the ears of your people, Lord God, that they will be able to hear your word and they will be able to receive it as you see fit, God. And Lord, I ask that you word my mouth, that whatever comes from my mouth be straight from the throne of God. Hallelujah. And I just thank you, Lord, that you are blessing us. Lord God, and bless this study, Lord God. Let each and every person be able to walk away from this with understanding and have a takeaway, uh, the, the takeaway that you desire for each person to take away. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> okay, so let's go right in. We are talking about the topic of fasting. Is it a necessity for Christians to fast? Should Christians fast? Is it going overboard to, to fast and to fast and pray? Okay, so let's just go straight to Matthew chapter 9, verses 14 and 15. Okay, and right here it says, Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, but thy disciples fast not? And Jesus said unto them, can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and they shall fast. No man putteth a piece of new cloth in an old garment for that which is put in it, in it to fill it up taketh from the garment and rent is made worse and the rent is made worse. Neither do men put new wine in old bottles else the bottles would break and the wine runneth out and the bottles perish, but they put new wine in new bottles, and both are preserved. And basically what is being said here, they said, okay, well, we fast all the time. Why don't your disciples fast? And Jesus' response was, I'm with them. So they do not fast. How can they fast if I'm with them? And see, the main purpose of fasting is to get in communion with Jesus, to be in communion with the Father, to be in communion with the Holy Spirit, okay? And what Jesus is saying right here is that these people, the disciples, had no reason to fast at that particular time because Jesus was with them. And they had no reason to fast because he was there physically in the flesh, not just in the spirit, but physically in the flesh. And so what he is telling us by this scripture because he says, the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken away from them and they then shall fast. We know that the bridegroom has been taken away from us in physical form. He is here in the spirit by the person of the Holy Ghost. But it is the time where he has physically been taken away from us. Therefore, according to this scripture, we have the mandate to fast because Jesus is no longer physically with us here. OK, and so we know that fasting is for the purpose of communion, communing with the Holy Spirit. It is in the purpose of communing with God, being one with him, uh, building in relationship with him. It, it, when you're in relationship with someone, the more time you spend with them, which is communion, the more time you commune with them, the more you get to know them, the more you even trust them, the more you kind of know their ways, you know their character, the more you kind of uh, begin to understand when they ask you to do something, you're not questioning motives and oh is this good for me to do no but you know them okay and um let's turn to first corinthians seven and five. First corinthians seven and five and it says defraud ye not one another except it be 
with consent for a time that ye may give yourselves to fasting and praying. And right here we have the Apostle Paul talking to married people and he's telling them you should not abstain from one another unless it is for the purpose of fasting and prayer. Why? Because when you are trying to get into that deep place with the Lord, there's um, distractions that need to be laid aside. Okay, and so he's saying that the, the only reason you should defraud yourself from one another, even as a married couple, is for the purpose of fasting and praying. So that is showing the importance of fasting and praying. That fasting and praying is so important that when you do it, when you do it, you should abstain yourself from a lot of things. And then let's turn to Matthew 5 and 6. Matthew 5, verse 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. Okay, we know that when you fast, you're depriving yourself of physical food, okay? And you're depriving yourself of the normal pleasures that you are, are used to having on a daily basis, okay? But this verse, Matthew 5 and 6 says, Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. It doesn't say blessed are those who hunger after food and after Burger King, after McDonald's, after Chick-fil-A. It says, but blessed are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness. So what it is telling us here is that the hunger in the spirit and the thirst in the spirit for righteousness is more grander than anything. Jesus also said in Scripture, my meat is to do the will of the Lord and to finish it, to complete it. And he, he said that in response to the disciples when the disciples offered him something to, to eat and were like, aren't you hungry? You need to eat. And his response was, my meat is to do the will of the Lord and to complete it, to finish it, showing that, yes, we have a physical body. But even though my body may be deprived right now, my meat is to do the will of the Lord and to comp complete it completed. That's where my full satisfaction comes from. And even in this scripture, it says that blessed are they who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they shall be filled. We have to get to a point where we understand that our filling comes from the word of God. The Bible says that man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceed out, proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And we have to understand that that is where our filling comes from and that it is, it is pivotal to get to a place where we say, okay, God, Okay, God, I'm going to lay this aside, meaning the food, the pleasure of our body. I'm going to lay that aside to seek your face. I'm going to lay it aside to get in your presence. I'm going to lay it aside to commune with you. And let's go to Matthew 4 and 4. Matthew 4 and 4 says, But he answered and said, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. We see, if you read the whole chapter of Matthew 4, prior to Jesus saying this, um, the, dev the devil came to him to try to tempt him because Jesus had been fasting for 40 days in the wilderness. Amen? He had been fasting for 40 days in the wilderness, and the, the devil, the tempter, came and told him, well, if you're the son of God, command these breads to be, to be made, command these stones to be made into bread. And Jesus said, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. And we see here that it shows us that it says we don't live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. So it's showing that our lifeline, hallelujah, our lifeline is the word of God. It is our very life source, our life support. You know, when people are on life support in the natural, hallelujah, and then they get taken off, some of them actually die when they're taken off of life support. If this is our lifeline and our life support, you will die if you get taken off of it. So we have to treat this, the word of God, our spiritual life more at a higher standard than we do this physical, okay? Because we know that the spiritual things are more real than the, 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 than the scene. The unseen is more real than the scene, okay? So we have to treat our spirituality and our relationship with God, our, our soul, our soul. The Bible says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We have to take our soul seriously where we say, if I got to do this, for, for my soul, if I have to do this to get closer to Jesus, then I'm going to do it. And we know, as in previous scripture, Jesus gave us the mandate. He said, when the bridegroom leaves, then 
they have to fast. And we know he has left off of this earth. He is in the form of the Holy Spirit and dwelling in us, but he has left in physical form. He's no longer here in physical form. Therefore, that is the mandate to fast. Amen. And so that's point number one. The One of the points of fasting is communion with God. Let's move on to another point. Point number two is humility. We fast for humility, to put ourselves in a place of humility before the Lord. Amen. Let's turn to Joel 2 and 12. Okay. And Joel 2 and 12 says, Therefore also now, saith the Lord, turn ye even to me with all your heart, and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And rend your heart, and not your garments, this is now verse 13, and turn unto the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and great of kindness, and repenteth him of the evil. Amen. So the Lord is telling us in Joel 2 verse 12, turn to me with all your heart. We end with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. We know that weeping and mourning is a form of humility. Fasting is also in this category because it is a form of humility. We are laying ourselves down to say, I don't need food at this moment. I don't need it at this moment because man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. That is a humble place to put yourself in, to say, I am going to put myself down low to seek the Lord. Because you know what? I believe that he is greater than me. He's greater than me. And he can sustain me for this time that I'm fasting. He can sustain me for this time that I'm fasting because he is greater than me. Okay? What I can do, what I can fix up in my kitchen for myself for one meal, God can do greater for me in the spirit and he can show enough sustain my body if he can sustain me in the spirit come on guys we have to understand this is the god who is going to take your soul and transfer it into heaven on the day of resurrection he can sustain you while you're fasting he can sustain you from meals okay while you're while you're um staying away from meals he can sustain you this is the almighty god this is the sovereign God. Don't ever say, oh, well, I can't do that. That's one thing I hear a lot when people talk about fasting. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. And it's like, it's not you. It's the Holy Spirit. That's why you need the Holy Spirit to do anything pertaining to this Christian walk to begin with. But it's the Holy Spirit. It's laying down the flesh. Of course, your flesh doesn't want to do that. Your flesh wants the things of the flesh. Your flesh wants to constantly be satisfied. But that's why Jesus said we must pick up our cross and follow him. We must die daily. Amen. And let's go to Ezra chapter 8, 21 and 23. Verse 21 and 23. And I apologize for any background noise. Um, They're doing a lot of construction out back. And um, I think some people are also listening to music. But this video had to get had to get recorded, okay? I wasn't gonna not do the video, okay? Um, so that is Ezra 8, verse 21 through 23. And it says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that they might that we might afflict ourselves before God to see of him right away for us and for our little ones and for all our substance. For I was ashamed to require of the king a band of soldiers and horsemen to help us against the enemy in the way, because we had spoken unto the king, saying, The hand of our God is upon all them for good that seek him, but his power and his wrath is against all them that forsake him. So we fasted and besought our God for this, and he was entreated of us. What I love here in verse 21 is it says, that he proclaimed a fast, that he might afflict himself before God. And the word afflict means to humble. It literally means to humble. So they set a fast so that they would humble themselves before God. Amen? And let's turn to Matthew 6, 16 through 18.
Okay. And Matthew 6, 16 through 18 is where Jesus is teaching about fasting. Okay. And so it says, Moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance, for they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy Father which is in secret. And thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. And this is Jesus telling us, fasting is a thing of humility. Fasting is something that we do when we are in a place of humility before the Lord. We come before the Lord and we, 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 he said, anoint your head and then wash it off, wash your face. Because he, he doesn't want people to see that you have your face uh, anointed and he doesn't want you walking around looking like, oh, I'm fasting. He wants you to do it in a humble state, that you're doing it between you and the Lord. Number one, when we fast, we're first, first of all, humbling ourselves before the Lord. But he's also saying in and otherwise, humble yourselves even before men too. Don't tell them you're fasting. Don't let them know you're fasting. Don't let them look around, uh, be able to look at you and tell by your demeanor that you're fasting. Don't be trying to act like you're all uh, just dying because you didn't have food for one day. Like he, he's, he's, he's saying, humble yourselves. Do not be as the hypocrites was his word with a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. So fasting is a form of humility, not just because we're uh, coming humble and laying ourselves down to God, but it is because uh, we, we, we need to operate in humility all around, not just towards God, but be humble and not let people know we're fasting. That's one thing I see a lot in the body of Christ. People tell people that they're fasting, and that is not the way to go. It is not a humility when you tell people you're fasting. Oh, I'm fasting. Oh, I'm doing this, and oh, I'm doing that. I'm fasting tonight, and oh, I'm a, this, this, no. That's, that's not what God desires us to do. He wants us to fast in secret because it says, your father which sees in secret will reward you openly, okay? People don't need to know that you're fasting. They do not need to know that you're fasting. It doesn't matter who it is. People do not need to know that you're fasting. That is personal. It is humble before God and it, and it is supposed to be a modest thing to, to that you keep towards yourself between you and God okay now I understand if you may have a question about fasting and you have a spiritual leader your pastor or your Christian mentor and you have a question about fasting and you may say I'm fasting right now and I had a question about such and such that's different that's your that's your pastor and that's your spiritual mentor if you absolutely had to ask them something then go ahead but anybody else I don't care who it is I don't care who it is it could be your best friend Anybody else, it is unnecessary to tell them that you are fasting. I personally don't tell anyone when I'm fasting. I don't care if it's a pastor. I don't care, I don't care who it is. I, there's no need for me to tell you that I'm fasting. That is between me and the Lord. That is because I am humbling myself uh, before the Lord. I am uh, communing with the Lord. This is our relationship. This has nothing to do with anyone else. And I am not here to act like I'm all just extra cool because I fast. And so there's no need for me to tell anyone that I'm fasting, okay? And so now we've covered fasting is to commune with God. We've covered fasting is a form of humility and it is to also humble ourselves before the Lord. Let's go into fasting to get God's attention. So one of the ways and one of the reasons people fast is to get God's attention, okay? Let's turn to Joel 1 and 14. Joel 1 and 14 is one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> it's one of my favorite scriptures and it says, Sanctify ye a fast, call a solemn assembly, gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord your God and cry unto the Lord. Amen. And it, it, verse 15 says, Alas, for the day, for the day of the Lord is at hand and as a destruction from the Almighty shall it come. Amen. And so we see here that because destruction was on its way, there was a call for the people to repent. But along with that call for the people to repent, he said, sanctify ye a fast and call a solemn assembly and gather the elders and all the inhabitants of the land into, thine, into the house of the Lord and cry 
account to the Lord because we see that they knew that judgment was going to come and that the people needed to repent. So they said, we're going to come together and sanctify a fast and we're going to call a solemn assembly, a holy assembly, a, an assembly that will be unified under the confinements of the holy God. We're going to call it together because we need to see the hand of the Lord move. Okay. So you can call a fast and that's what a lot of churches do. A lot of churches have a corporate fast is what they call a corporate fast where churches fast together. And so it's like, okay, this month we're fasting and it's everybody in the church fasting. It's not a personal fast, but just you. It's everyone in the church. And that is a, a solemn assembly. It's an assembly of believers fasting together because something needs, the hand of the Lord needs to be moved. Okay. The hand of the Lord needs to be moved. There is something that, that, that just needs to be taken care of by God. They need to get God's attention in some way. So they're like, we're going to call a fast, just like it was done here in Joel 2 verse 14 okay and so let's go to esther verse 4 and 16 i pray you guys are following thus far and i pray this is blessing you thus far okay so esther chapter 4 verse 16 says go Gather together all the Jews that are present in Shushan and fast ye for me and neither eat nor drink three days, night or day. I also and my maidens will fast likewise. And so will I go in unto the king, which is not according to the law. And if I perish, I perish. Mm. We see here that this is Esther speaking. She had a situation that she needed to address. And so she was willing to go against the laws. You see how it says here, I will go into the king, which is not according to the law. You're not supposed to go into the king without being summoned. You can't just, oh, king, I'm here. Even though she was the wife of the king. She was the queen and she, she but there's certain laws that are in place, okay? And so she says, all right, you guys got to fast. Let's fast. You know, let's come together. Let's do this fast. I'm going to fast. My maidens are going to fast. You guys fast with me. Come in an agreement with me as well. Do not drink or eat anything for three days and three nights because we need to see a turnaround in this situation. We need to see the people uh, be, be spared. We need to see the people be saved. Okay. And what is it in your life that you need to see? What, what, what is it in your life? That you, you need vindicated, that you need turned around, okay? That's when you can you can fast to see the hand of the Lord move, fast for God's attention, okay? And so Esther was able to fast, and she gained that, the, 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 what she needed in the spirit to be able to do the work that she needed to do, and it gave her the courage to be able to go unto the king and she said, if I perish, I perish. And see, fasting will give you boldness as well. Fasting will just keep you so in tune to what it is that God is asking you to do. Amen. Fasting will loose bands and bonds that the enemy has tried to put on you. It will loose bands and bonds that the enemy has tried to put on your family. It will break curses, break generational curses. It will just do, it, it will complete. It will complete a work. It will complete a work. God uses fasting. Because we, when we fast, we put ourselves in such a humble and vulnerable state. God allows fasting. Because he's allowing his Holy Spirit to work through us while we're fasting. He allows that to clean up even stuff that may be in you physically, in you in the spirit and physically. But he allows it to clean you up and clean up things in your life. If there's confusion and mess in your life and things will just be turned. Okay. And let's, um, uh, also, you know what, one thing about Esther is she was uh, given power when she fasted, okay? Power to overcome fear, power to do something that uh, no one would have done and people would look at her like she was crazy, which was to um, go into the king without being summoned. Um, so fasting will give you power as well. Fasting will give you power to be able to do something. But okay. we'll talk about that a little later, okay? So we've talked about fasting being fasting and praying being for humility, communion with God, 
getting God's attention. Now let's talk about fasting for direction, okay? So let's turn to Ezra 8, 21 through 23. And we've already read this, but I'm going to read verse 21, okay? And it says, Then I proclaimed a fast there at the river of Ahava, that we might afflict ourselves before God to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones and for all our substance, okay? So you can fast for direction because sometimes you don't know uh, which way to go or sometimes things are placed before you and you're like, God, which way should I go? Which opportunity should I take? Which one is you? Which one is not you? And so oftentimes people fast, you know, just like with the churches and they go on corporate fast, you know, um, sometimes it is because there's direction that they're seeking as well. Sometimes it's because they're seeking for the hand of the Lord to be moved. Um, it, it depends on what they're, they're going on fasting for. And so when you fast, you can fast to seek for direction. And I love that he said, we, I'm proclaiming a fast so we can seek of him a right way for us. Okay. He wanted to not lean on his own understanding. He applied Proverbs <laughs> um, 3, 5 through 7. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. But in all your ways acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. He applied that scripture because he said, I want to seek of him a right way for us. Not just I want to seek of him a right way for me, but I want to seek of him a right way for us and for our little ones, and for all of our substance. He was concerned with what God's concern was about him, about the people who God had um, put him in community with, and for all of their families, the, the little children, and for all of their substance. Their substance is the things that they own, their possessions, their what would be considered their money. You know, And oftentimes people do not seek the Lord as to what they should be doing with their finances. But that's another topic for another video, okay? Um, <laughs> so we see here also that he, he was looking for direction. And it was not just for himself. He was looking for direction for others, okay? And so sometimes people can fast for others. Uh, sometimes a mother may fast for her son or for her daughter. Sometimes a wife may fast for her husband. Sometimes um, a teacher may fast for the school district, like, oh God, I need direction for what you're calling me to do in this school district. I know you've called me to be a mouthpiece here. You know, whatever the case may be, a pastor could fast for their congregation, um, okay? You know, you can fast for another person should the Lord lead you to. Um, that's that's so, uh, it's definitely scriptural to do that, should the Lord lead you to. Um, and he will give you the grace to do it if he is leading and guiding you to do so. And so we see here that, Ezra was fasting, and he was fasting to see the direction of the Lord. Lord, what way do you want me to go? So honestly, with that being said, I want to encourage you that if you are seeking direction from the Lord, to go in a place of fasting and praying, and understand that it is fasting and praying. Sometimes people try to separate the two. They say, I pray. They say, I fast. They say, you know, one or the other. But fasting and praying is the thing. It's not just fasting, but it is fasting with prayer. Okay. In my book, The Gates, um, I specifically, when I touch on that subject, I specifically touch on it as fasting with prayer because it goes hand in hand. It is not you just pray. It is not you just fast. Okay. So I would encourage you, if you are seeking the Lord for direction, whatever it may be, it may be something like you don't know what school to go to. You have multiple scholarship offers on the table for two different schools, full ride scholarships. And you're like, Lord, I want to be in your perfect will. Which way do you want me to go? Fast and pray for that. Um, fast and pray for whatever you need direction from the Lord on. Nothing is too small. Nothing is too big. We have to understand that God is God. He, 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 he wants you to seek him for direction. That's why he said lean not on your own understanding. But in all your ways, acknowledge him. Whatever you need direction in, that is a perfect opportunity to, in that way, acknowledge him so he can do what? Direct your path, okay? And for him to direct your path, that means that he is going to lead you down the way that he wants you to go. So I would encourage you to fast and pray if you're seeking direction because I can guarantee you that the Lord will give you direction. He absolutely will give you direction. If you fast and pray for it, he will give you direction. Why? Because you are humbling yourself before him which is acknowledging that he is God, acknowledging that you don't know everything. And that's putting him in his proper place, which is above all, which is sovereign above all. Okay. And it is a guarantee 
that's one thing I can guarantee you is that he will give you direction. Now, I cannot guarantee that you will like the direction that he gives you, but I can guarantee you that he will give you direction. Whether you like the direction or not, that's between you and God. But yes, he will surely give you the direction that you are seeking. He will give you the right direction so you can go down the right, proper, prepared path for you. Because one thing you have to understand when it comes to direction from the Lord and being in the perfect will of God, he has a prepared path for us. So that's why it's pivotal to seek direction and why you do need direction and you cannot lean on your own understanding because you want to go down the prepared path that God has for you, okay? And also, let's turn to Acts chapter 13, verse 2. Acts chapter 13, verse 2 says, And they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Ghost said, Separate me, Barnabas and Saul, for the work whereunto I have called them. Oh, I love this scripture. Because they ministered to the Lord. See, when you pray and praise and sing praises and fast, that is considered ministering to the Lord. It says they ministered to the Lord and they fasted. Okay? And it says, And the Holy Ghost said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. Okay? See, when you fast and you put yourself in a position of fasting and praying towards the Lord, the Holy Spirit will speak. As I said before, I can guarantee you that he will give you direction. Okay? Because when you fast, the Holy Spirit will speak. It says they ministered to the Lord and they fasted and the Holy Ghost said. All right? So it wasn't they ministered and fasted and Brother Joe said, but they ministered and fasted and the Holy Ghost spake. And he said, separate me Barnabas and Saul for the work whereunto I have called them. You're looking for direction? Some, uh, some pastors have um, things that other people don't have to deal with because they're pastors and they have to figure out who's called to be in this leadership position, who's called to be in that leadership position. They can minister to, unto the Lord and fast. And the Holy Spirit will say, separate me, so-and-so and so-and-so, and so, for the work that I have called them to do. Okay? Now, for those of you who have been struggling with knowing your calling, this is a perfect thing to do. Fast and pray and minister to the Lord. Why? Because we see here that when they fasted and prayed and ministered to the Lord, the Holy Ghost spake. And what did he do? He spake and told them to separate people to do what he called them to do. He, he spoke to these people and said, I need you to grab these people because I've called them to do such a thing. So I'm needing you to grab them and send them out because I've called them to do something. You want to know your calling? Go before the Lord. Ask the Lord, Lord, what am I called to do? But fast and pray. That is another thing to fast and pray for because it is direction. When it comes to your calling, that's a direction. Because if you go outside of your calling, that's a wrong direction. When you go towards your calling, that is the right direction. So it is pivotal to know exactly what you're called to do. So if you don't and you're struggling with that, fasting and praying would be a good thing for you to do. To fast for direction from the Lord as to what you're called to do. Amen. And if we read the, the next verse after that, verse 3, and it says, And when they had fasted and prayed and laid their hands on them, they sent them away. So they fasted and prayed for direction, heard the Lord. They fasted and prayed, heard the Lord, and then fasted and prayed and laid hands on the people. You see, these people are living a lifestyle of fasting and praying, okay? A lifestyle of fasting and praying not just fasting here not just fasting there not just fasting when the church fasts but a lifestyle of fasting and praying our next point is you fat can fast and pray to do a work to be empowered to do a work and that's why I said when we were talking about Esther and I spoke about power I said I'll get back to that a little later and here we are you can fast and pray to be empowered to do a work. There's some things that God is calling people to do um, and they may need to really, really, really be endowed with a, another measure of power from on high. Um, kind of like when the, the disciples had to get empowered with another measure of power from on high. Jesus said, um, wait until you be endowed with power from on high because it was another level. They were already casting out demons and healing the sick. They were already doing those things. But Jesus still said to them, wait until you be endowed with power from on high. Okay. So we're already at Acts 13 and 3 where it said, um, and when they had fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, 
they sent them away because fasting and praying needed to be implemented before they were sent out to do the work which God had called them to do. Amen. And let's turn to Mark 9 and 29. So that's Mark chapter 9, verse 29. And Mark chapter 9, verse 29 says, And he said unto them, This kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. And this is the instance when um, a father came to the disciples for the disciples to cast out a demon out of his child. And the disciples couldn't do it. The disciples couldn't cast out the demon. So Jesus comes along, and to make a long story short, Jesus ends up casting out this demon. Um, and the disciples later on asked him, well, why couldn't we cast out this demon? And Jesus replied to them and said, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. That's a huge thing. You mean to tell me these disciples were casting out demons, healing the sick, and doing all that stuff before. But Jesus is telling them, you can't cast out this demon except by prayer and fasting. Because you need to be empowered on another level to be able to do this work. And we see here in this instance where the man came to the disciples and the disciples couldn't cast out the demon, okay? But we see here that when Jesus came in contact with the man, Jesus says, um, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you and how long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. So Jesus was like, just bring the, the boy to me. Okay, Jesus came and Jesus came and he was seeing that, um, okay, well, my disciples did not cast out the demons. Like, what are, what are they doing here? People want their, their, their child to be free. My disciples cannot cast out this demon. And so he says, all right, you're operating in a lack of faith right now, but just bring the boy to me. Okay, and so when he brought him, the boy to him, he asked him, how long is it ago since it came unto him, since the spirit came unto him? And um, the man said, since he was a child. Since he was a child. And so after that, Jesus replies um, to him and says, if thou can believe, all things are possible to him that believeth, okay? And then if we go a little further down, it says the child Cry, uh, uh, the father of the child cried out with tears and said, Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And then it says, uh, Jesus said to the spirit, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, thou deaf, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. What stuck out to me the most was that the disciples couldn't cast out the spirit because and they never once identified the spirit. So they couldn't cast it out because they couldn't identify it. We see here that Jesus was able to identify it. Why? Because Jesus lived a lifestyle of fasting and praying. He would go into the wilderness to fast and pray for 40 days at a time. He would go just into, into to trenches and be like, okay, I gotta pray, I gotta pray, all right? And so he was able to identify the spirit and said, thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge you to come out of him and enter into him no more. And the spirit had no choice but to leave, okay? So the disciples could not identify the spirit, therefore they couldn't cast it out. Had they lived a lifestyle of fasting and praying even at this time. See, what this shows us, what this shows us about fasting and praying is that fasting and praying gets us in communion with the Lord. It gets us open to hearing what the Lord is saying. Therefore, if God is saying, cast this demon out, God will also tell you 
what demon it is that needs to be cast out. So fasting and praying will open up your ears and open up your spiritual discernment to be able to see what is around you, to be able to see what you're dealing with. Because God does not call you, oh, cast out this demon that you don't know what it is. That's not God. God is not the author of confusion, but he is a God of order. And so we see here that fasting and praying would have empowered a person in this situation to be able to identify the spirit and then be able to cast it out because they know what to cast out. They know what to call out. He was able to say, thou deaf and dumb spirit, enter into him no more. Come out and enter into him no more. He didn't just say, oh, just come out and enter him no more. How is it going to listen if, it, if you're not even addressing who it is. You're not even addressing it by, by its name. Okay. And so fasting and praying will keep you in tune with what the Holy Spirit is saying. One thing I love about Jesus is that Jesus said, I only speak what I hear the father speak. And I only do what I, uh, I see the father do. And this is so pivotal when you are in, in tune and in communion with the Holy Spirit, you can hear what he is speaking. So you'll speak what he is speaking. If Jesus says, uh, if the father said to Jesus, it's a deaf and dumb spirit, Jesus is like thou deaf and dumb spirit. Come out of him and never enter into him no more. So we want to be in communion with the Lord to the point where we can hear the voice of the Lord and be able to discern what the Lord is speaking to us and be able to test what's of God and what's not of God. Amen. And uh, Matthew 17, 20 through 22, the, the same instance where the disciples could not cast out the demon. Okay. And he says, it can only come out by prayer and fasting. So this is the same instance, but just a different account in scripture. And it's awesome to show the different accounts because we see that scripture confirms itself. Why? Because scripture is truth. Scripture is fact, not opinion. Okay. So it's good to even see the cross references and how multiple people in the Bible, multiple men of God uh, accounted and documented the same account, account of Jesus Christ. Okay. So we know that there are certain things that cannot, based off by this scripture, we know that there are certain things that cannot be overcome except by prayer and fasting. What some things in your life, maybe you've been facing it and facing it and facing it and facing it and it's not been able to be shaken out of your life because it can only come out by prayer and fasting. It can, you can only be relieved of it by prayer and fasting, okay? And so now I want to talk to you about what fasting is not and what not to do. When you're fasting okay turn with me to isaiah 58 isaiah 58 we're going to start at verse 1 and it says cry aloud spare not lift up thy voice like a trumpet and show my people their transgression and the house of jacob their sins yet they seek me daily and delight to know my ways as a nation that did righteousness and forsook not the ordinance of the Lord. They ask of me the ordinances of justice. They take delight in approaching to God. Wherefore have we fasted, say they, and thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul, and thou takest no knowledge? Behold, in the day of your fasting, ye find pleasure and exact all your labors. Behold, ye fast for strife and debate, and to smite with the fist of the wickedness. And ye shall not fast as ye do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high? Is it such a fast that I have chosen? A day for a man to afflict his soul? Is it to bow down his head as a bulrush, and to spread sackcloth and ashes under him? Will thou call this a fast? And an acceptable fast unto the Lord? Is not this the fast that I have chosen? To loose the bands of the wickedness. To undo the heavy burdens. And to let the oppressed go free. That ye break every yoke. Is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? That thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house? When thou seest the naked and thou cover him. And that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning. And then thine health shall spring forth speedily. And thy righteousness shall go before thee. And the glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. And thou shalt call and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry and he shall say, here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger and the speaking vanity. So Isaiah 58, I read verse one through verse nine. And that is what God is saying. 
He listed a whole bunch of things that the people were doing. And then they were approaching God saying, haven't I fasted before you? Haven't I came before you in humility? And he's like, no, you haven't. And here's why you haven't. And he listed to them why. He said, because they find pleasure when they're fasting. And, and they, they, they fast for strife and debate and to be seen, to be heard on high, to be looked at as if they are just this holy person for fasting, to start debates, to start quarrels. They're fasting for their own glory. They're not fasting to humble themselves before God. They're fasting to actually look exalted in the eyes of man. So man can look at them and be like, that's that person who fasts all the time. That's what not to do when you're fasting. Don't tell people you're fasting as we discussed previously, but don't fast because you want to think that it makes you feel extra spiritual. No, because fasting is not about you. It is about humbling yourself before the Lord. It is about the Lord being exalted in your life and being exalted in and through the things around you in this world. Amen. It is not about us being exalted before people and looking like we are super spiritual in God and Jesus number two. No, God has the place of sovereign sovereignty. He is the only one who is to be exalted. Amen. And he, he gives, he says, shouldn't you deal your bread to the hungry and give to the poor, take the poor into your house and clothe the naked? And he says, uh, you should uh, let the oppressed go free, break every yoke, loose the bands of the wickedness and undo heavy burdens. That's the type of fast that I've chosen. So when you're fasting, God is saying, I want you to become more like me. I want you to be endowed. Uh, so you can walk like me, talk like me, be like me, do the things I do, not operating uh, all these quarrels and all this strife and confusion. So that's what not to do. Amen. And let's go to Matthew 6, 16 and 18. Okay, Matthew 6, 16 and 18. We already... um covered upon some of this. And this is where he says, moreover, when ye fast, be not as the hypocrites of a sad countenance for they disfigure their faces that they may appear unto men to fast. But verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou fast, anoint thine head and wash thy face that thou appear not unto men to fast, but that thy father, which is in secret, show, uh, he will see in secret, will reward you openly, okay? So just, be humble, truly, in real humility when you fast, not false humility. I'm trying to get uh, pats on the back for fasting, so telling everyone you're fasting so you can get a pat on the back so people can think you're extra spiritual and just so people can ask you all these questions and make you into their personal mentor because you just want people to, you know, um, just to depend on you. No, depend on God and lead people to depend on God, okay? Don't blurt out that you're fasting when you're fasting, okay? And those are what not to do. And I pray this series and this, this segment on fasting has blessed you. Um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. Um, if you have any, just anything you want to say about the video, um, if this video blessed you, let me know in the comment section, okay? I want to pray with you guys right now, okay? Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I just ask that you just... Bless your people indeed, God. Lord, I pray that in this season you enlarge their territory in the spirit, God. That if some were on milk, Lord, that they will be on meat this time in the spirit, God. And if some were already on meat, meat, Lord God, let them be on gourmet meat now in this season, Lord God. Let them be able to taste and see that you are good. Let them be able to indulge, Father God, in what you truly have for them, Lord God. If some uh, may not know what it is that you are calling them to do, Lord God, as they fast and as they pray and as they humble themselves before you, Lord God, reveal to them what it is that you've called them to do, God. Lord, as your people go into fasting and praying for whatever it is that they may be seeking you for, it could be because they just want to humble themselves before you, God. They want to commune with you. They need direction. They need uh, uh, to be empowered to do a work, Lord God. Lord, I just pray that you just give them what they are seeking for, Lord God, that you meet them there, Lord God, that you just continue, Lord God, to fill your people up with more of you, God, that you just continue, Lord God, to love on your people, that even when they're in fasting, Lord God, that your love will shower upon each and every person, Lord God. And Lord, I ask, Lord Jesus, that humility be the portion and the mantle of all of your people, Lord God. And Lord, in this season, Lord God, I just pray that you just continue to show yourself mighty and strong and reveal, God, your word continuously and daily as they even read your word on their personal time, Lord God. And let your name be glorified in and through their life. In Jesus' name, amen. And remember, fasting and praying should always yield growth, okay? Because when you fast and pray, 
You should be growing in the spirit, growing in the things of God. You should not be in the same place that you were um, when, before you started fasting as you are when you finish fasting. You should not be in the same place when you finish fasting as you were uh, last season or a couple seasons ago. Okay, so fasting should always yield and produce the fruit of growth. Okay, so basically with that being said, if you're um, abstaining from food or maybe you're just taking away certain foods when you do a Daniel fast, that is just a diet. If you are not yielding the fruit of growth, if you are not constantly going from faith to faith in the things of God, if you are not constantly moving and progressing in God. So remember, fasting yields growth. Amen. Whatever you are seeking the Lord on, know that the Lord will meet you when you are fasting and praying. Okay. I pray that you all have a blessed and prosperous day today. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have any more questions on fasting and prayer, leave a comment in the comment box. Share this video with your friends. Like it. Share it on social media. Share it all over the world. Let it bless someone else as it has blessed you. God bless. Remember, fasting and praying is not an option for you if you believe in the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. It is a lifestyle for you. Heavenly Father.